you do family history on your smartphone. In June, we've seen some significant updates to the Family Tree app. I want to go over them with you today. We will be using 3.9.4, which was just updated on June 21st. Let's go. So as you can see right off, there are new icons. As we click through each of these, you can see there are a few more functions that we'll be talking about. Here in our tree app, we have great functionality. Let's go to our tree view and let's actually select an ancestor from our pedigree chart. Let's go ahead and look at Thomas Elder. Now, as you can see, he has a record we can attach and we can see his details. He has a new little icon. I think the new icons are awesome. They look amazing for the boys and the girls. These little icon pictures where you can put your picture. But we have details, sources, parents. Let's go to some sources here and kind of look and see what the new look and feel is to this app. As you can see, all the regular tabs are here. And as we go through our sources, you can see that there's a source that we can actually add more um, people to. Let's add this new source here. It's the United States Census, the 19 or 1870 Census. As we scroll down, we can kind of look and see that we are uh, looking at the right family. So let's go ahead and click compare. When we do this, we see the document on the left-hand side and what we have on our tree on the right-hand side. We want to look to see if the names and places and dates are the same. Now, before I add this over its information to the other side, as you can see, in 1860, they were in Kentucky as well. And you kind of want to make sure those places match up. Then we want to go through and make sure the family names are the same. Now, as you notice on this one, the names in my family tree are spelled differently than the names that are in this document. Don't worry, this happens quite often. Sometimes the enumerators that go around taking the census are just spelling things phonetically. Um, so if they're close and the entire family is here, I pretty much know this is a match and so I want to add it. As we look through, we have Zerelda, we have Havana, we have a William, a Louisa, a Louisa. So there's Zorinda, which should be Zerelda. <laughs> there's a Manna, which is a Vanna. <laughs> there's Louisa, which is spelled different. So looking at their birth dates and just the spelling of their name are different, but this family group is the same, same parents. So I feel pretty confident that this is the correct family. We just want to check and make sure even the sun <laughs> is on here. So let's go ahead and add this new information. And then we just scroll down and we hit yes, attach. Easy as that. Now we want to make sure we review all the others in this document to make sure that this document is attached to them as well. This is simple and easy to do. If they have a check by their name, it's already attached. Someone has already attached this to the rest of the family members, then we're just gonna go through and make sure that it's attached. How do we know it's attached? Because down at the bottom of each of these, you will see that the information is there and it has a detached down there. If you have that little detached button, you know that it's already attached to them. Now, if for some reason this is a mistake, and you need to remove this document from this family member, you can always click that detach button to remove this document from that person. So Family Tree has made it a lot easier to go through and attach and detach records and just in case you made a mistake. We all make mistakes. It's happened to me, it's happened to everybody. Some of these records are hard to know, you know, for sure. So, all right, it's attached, woohoo. All right, so he has some great records here. I love the new look and it's speeding along. If we click the three buttons at the top, you see we have view my relationship, research records, possible duplicates, view this tree, and then more. 
When you click more, you can actually share this person's information to someone. You can text it to them. You can email it to them. You can post it on Facebook. There's a lot of options for sharing a person on your tree now. So making sure your information is correct and the information in the tree is correct is easy to do when we collaborate with other people. Share your stuff. Make sure your information is correct. Now, we can also look, in, look at the records that we can print out for this person. We can print out a pedigree or we can go to a family group record. This family group record is an official document that um, the program creates as we um, input information. As you can see, it's extensive. It has all the citations for each of the sources and records that are attached to this person. You can see where it came from, who put it on there. It's a very wonderful, complete sourced and document for um, all the work that's been done for this ancestor on family tree. Pretty cool. Now from here, you can print it out. You can download and save it and file on your computer. You can send it to someone. So fantastic, fantastic new tools that we have here that we have access to. All right, family group records. Very, very cool. Now we still have all the same functionalities here on our task button. If we go up and click this information button at the very top, we'll get what the record hints mean, what the new colors mean, um, and even a learning video that are awesome. So make sure you go ahead and, and click those eye icons, those information icons. Here on Ordinance Ready, we do the same thing. Click the information button. You understand the policy, you understand um, what each of the icons mean and what the colors now mean. So green means ready, blue means in progress, um, yellow means cannot request it for three different reasons and they explain each one. Let's check out the ordinance ready button and see if that's the same. All right, oh, there's also different functionalities here and um, filters. And then up here in the three buttons, we can see our temple cards that we've reserved. So there's my reservations, there's ones I've shared to the temple or with other people, and then my reservations. Now let's go to the ordinance ready button. It's the same. It's going to scroll through what your reservation list and the um, names that are have been reserved to the temple. Same thing, click the ones you want. Ordinance Ready checks the following sources for available ordinances. Persons on your reservation list, persons who are related to you, who's been shared with the temple, your direct ancestors and other relatives, and persons who are not related to you whose ordinance have been shared with the temple. So here it explains exactly to you under the information button, everything you need to know about the Ordinance Ready function the different icons and the legend you'll need to move forward with your temple work. Very, very cool. I think it looks great and it's buzzing right along. As you're doing research and you're looking for people in your tree, you don't have to go back through and remember who you had. It's all just right under the recents button. Now the more button. Absolutely love this more button. If we go to contact us, we'll be able to find a Family History Center near us. What is a Family History Center? A Family History Center is a location where you can access more records than you can through your home subscription or through your account at home. Right now, during our COVID season, not all of them are working um, their regular hours, so make sure you call them before you go over to make sure that they actually are open. Now, if you want to help someone, you can do it from your phone now. All you have to do is click help someone and then put in their name or an ID number or their helper number and you'll have access to their tree so you can help them from your phone. It's a very cool feature. There's a new function on the app that's called improve place names. This will help us improve the accuracy of the place name so that the um, algorithm will be able to find the correct records that go with your ancestor. As you can see here, we have a place from the 1900s, 
Portsmouth City Ward 2, Rockingham, New Hampshire, United States. That's going to be hard for the algorithm to find because I don't think there's a city called Portsmouth City Ward 2. So if you just go to the standardized places, it's Portsmouth, Rockingham, New Hampshire. You pick that one and you're good to go. Then the system will be able to find that place and more records for your ancestor. These new features and functions are absolutely wonderful. I love the new icons and I love the accessibility, the quickness and the ease that this app has now. It gives you many more functions that the desktop version has. You just have to know where to look to find them. So go ahead and take your time and start clicking on your new Family Tree app.